I'm Callie Crossley. This week on Under the Radar with Callie Crossley, a millionaire's tax, driver's licenses for undocumented drivers, dental insurance costs, and alcohol sales. Those are the issues framing the four ballot questions for the upcoming November 8th election. And as is typical of ballot questions, it takes more than one read to decipher the details and understand what's at stake. Ballot question number three focuses on alcohol sales across the state. Would a new law give an unfair advantage to grocery and convenience stores or be a big boon for big liquor retailers? We're breaking down the multiple parts of ballot question number three and the meaning of a yes or no vote. Later in the show, you may know about Patti LaBelle's pie, but now a lot of celebrities are stirring it up in the kitchen. I want ideas. You know, I want slightly unexpected flavor combinations, or I want something that is really true to that person. So I'm like shooting dice now. Seven. <laughs> so I'm from New Mexico, and we're going to be making green chili chicken enchilada pot. I don't eat a lot of vegetables, girl. You don't? No. We're diving into celebrity cookbooks. Are the recipes yummy or yucky? We'll be the judge. But first, joining me now, two people who know how to explain the yes and no sides of the question. Soraya Wintersmith, political reporter for the TV, radio, and digital GBH Newsroom. Hello, Soraya. Hi, Callie. Also with me, Mike Dean, co-writer of the Boston Axios Newsletter. Welcome back, Mike. Great to be back on GBH, Kelly. I'm so glad to have both of you because I do not understand <laughs> this question. <laughs> so I'm just going to, I want to start just in an overarching way, have each of you weigh in on first, what would a yes vote do? And then what would a no vote do? And then let's break down all the pieces. All right, Mike, as a guest, I'm going to let you start. <laughs> Well, it's a relatively simple uh, yes or no, as these ballot questions are, but you kind of have to start with what the current status quo is when it comes to beer and wine sales in uh, convenience stores, grocery stores, all sorts of other you know, chain stores. So a yes vote on this would expand the number of beer and wine licenses that a chain could hold from the current nine up to 12 next year, 15 a few years after that, and then a maximum of 18 by uh, the 2031. Um, so it is going to allow places like Cumberland Farms, Stop and Shop, uh, even you know Target or Walmart or other big box stores to carry more beer and wine. I'm sure listeners are familiar with uh, a few of those stores that can carry it. You know, as Trader Joe's uh, will carry their famous two buck chuck wine, but not every location does. This would allow places to carry some more. And when, especially when you're getting into places like convenience stores, gas stations, things like that, it could become much more readily available. Mm -hmm. Okay, Saria, so uh, why don't you add something? Uh, so the other thing that it would do is limit the number of licenses that allow folks to sell spirits to seven. So going from nine to 18, the total number of licenses that you can have, if I'm a retailer and I have a chain of stores and I wanna sell hard liquor at stores, I can do that at up to seven of my locations. And that's assuming that I have the maximum number of licenses. Okay. All right, no vote, Mike. What does a no <laughs> vote do? No vote would keep things the way they are, uh, which is limiting them to nine locations and not expanding them the way that they've been. Um, it, it's a little more complicated than that because uh, this ballot question is actually being put forward by some of those package stores, the liquor lobby, so to speak, the mom and pop liquor stores, the local stores that probably don't want to see these big box chains expand that way. It's kind of almost an olive branch or a compromise that they're putting forward to say, look, Stop trying to change the law in the legislature. Uh, stop any further ballot questions that you might do to make that limit go even higher and higher and higher. Let's settle it now uh, at that lower number and just let it let it go. <laughs> um, so it, it's kind of an interesting thing where the people who might benefit the most from this aren't necessarily pushing it. And those that at a first glance seem like they might suffer the most by expanding these liquor licenses, they're actually the ones behind it. Hmm. Soraya. I will just add to your earlier reading about whether or not the law unfairly punishes some folks. Some of the other things that it does are uh, ban um, 
those automated transactions when you go to the grocery store and you want to self check out mm -hmm. you would not be able to do alcohol through the self checkout if this passes uh, the other thing that it would do is um, change how fines are calculated uh, particularly for retailers that sell more than alcohol might help me out i think right now it's mm -hmm. all gross profits of alcohol but if it changes it will be Become, all profits yeah, exactly yes yeah, so it'll be gross profits of the store itself and so you think that's kind of where the devil may be in the details for these larger stores because uh if a liquor store gets dinged for you know selling to an underage person or you know public consumption in the parking lot something like that it would be uh the fine would be based on the sales of that store uh the alcohol sales which is all the sales they have in a mm -hmm. liquor store if that happens at a target or if that happens at a stop and shop, mm -hmm. it's going to be the gross profits of the entire store is what that fine is based on, not just the liquor sales. So uh, relatively speaking, those bigger chains that sell more than alcohol who are going to stand to benefit from this expansion will be uh, far heavier penalized under this new rule if it goes through. And the only other thing that I'll add is just for me, the most important part of this, I mean, I have a Massachusetts license now, but uh, as a transplant, when I first arrived, I had a DC license. And if you are like me and you've gone to the grocery store where there's a large selection of wine and you want to make your dinner and get something to go with it, and you have your out-of-state license and you've been turned away because you can't purchase alcohol with an out-of-state license, this law would make that out-of-state license an acceptable form of identification and proof of age if you want to purchase. May I ask why, I understand Massachusetts, is that Massachusetts the only state that currently denies out-of-state? Is that right? And Soraya, and if so, why do they do that? I mean, what's the advantage for Massachusetts? I have absolutely no idea whether or not Massachusetts is the only one that does it. I would think that it would sort of tamp down on fake transactions oh, I see. because you okay. wouldn't want people to be responsible for knowing what a California license looks like and a uh, DC license uh -huh. and all that stuff. And there's a lot of students here. Um, you know, right. we get wily when we're in our 20s. <laughs> yeah. So the advantage then of changing that is that there's more people to sell to. I mean, just you know, why are they saying, well, let's change that? I know? would be able to, I, I, mm -hmm. I would be able to purchase my alcohol mm -hmm. without having to switch my license from a DC one to a Massachusetts one. And presumably if someone is visiting, you know, like you get an Airbnb, you're not going to change your whole right. license over if you're just coming for a little while, but you may want to buy some liquor or some wine. Gotcha. I'm Callie Crossley, and you're listening to Under the Radar with Callie Crossley. I'm joined by Soraya Wintersmith of the GBH Newsroom and Mike Dean of the Boston Axios Newsletter. We're dissecting ballot question number three, which focuses on alcohol sales. So except with perhaps that exception, Soraya and Mike, I see how some of the large liquor retailers may benefit. I can see maybe how some of the grocery stores and convenience stores could benefit or be harmed. But I am trying to figure out where is the consumer benefiting on either side of this? And so far, the only thing that either of you said is that if somebody's coming from out of state, they can now get their license accepted. That seems to be the only thing that mm. is consumer friendly. The other parts, I don't get. I think well, uh, you go ahead, Mike. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll, thank you, Sarah. Um I'll give you kind of both sides of it, uh, of, of what either side will say is the benefit for consumers, Callie. Uh, from the liquor store, uh, you know, the existing liquor store point of view, this is going to increase the number of, you know, big box stores and grocery stores that you will be able to buy beer and wine in, um, you know, up, upwards of quite a few by the 2030s. That means that, yes, you would be able to buy that six pack on your way through uh, Shaw's or Star Market or something like that. Uh, from the other side of it, uh, it means that, you know, the no side, so to speak, would be that because they want to go further or they may want to go further down the road, uh, meaning the chains may want to go further down the road. We have companies like Total Wine who are now mm. establishing locations in Massachusetts. Right now, they're limited by how many licenses they can have, just like any other chain store. 
they are big force. They are a big, you know, money making corporation that is expanding pretty rapidly in this area. They could very well want to get the legislature to rewrite those rules in the future. Maybe even throw that that limit out the window or double or triple it, you know, years down the road, so they can keep building more and more and more. Um, so that would certainly, from a consumer standpoint, make uh, liquor, you know, wine and liquor and, and beer far more accessible. Um, if it got to the point where, like in other states, you can get beer and wine in practically every gas station. Practically Practically every convenience store that would have a huge impact on um, how consumers acquire uh, beer and wine, especially around Massachusetts. Okay, so that sounds like. Sorry, I'm gonna let you, because I'm completely still tangled up here. That sounds like I'm voting on maybe something might happen in the future, and what could be now. I, I mean, that's what it sounds like. What you just said, Mike, is that what? It, Am I well? There'll be a sm there'll be a small change in the immediate, you know, over the next few years. This, you know, goes up and up and up uh, between 2023 and 2030. It will increase the number of licenses. So, a few more uh, convenience stores will start selling beer and wine. A few more grocery stores will start selling beer and wine over that time period. I think from the Packy's perspective too, if there is a future effort, which they say they're trying to head off, if there is a future effort to get rid of license limits completely and alcohol availability greatly expands because there aren't any more limits. From the Packy's perspective, that would be bad for consumers in Massachusetts because who's regulating alcohol at that point? In talking to at least one of the people from the independent association that is pushing this question, they say that it is a benefit to consumers for alcohol to still be regulated for there to be caps and licenses because otherwise we'd be like places like Louisiana where people are just <laughs> drinking and running around with alcohol everywhere and you know I got relatives in Louisiana so I know that to be true <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's where here. consumer yeah it's where consumer benefit runs up against public safety benefit in a way okay all right now here's a question I want to I want to play some clips here so I'm looking at this ballot question and you go down if you look at ba ballot Pedia, uh, ballot Opedia, I guess. Um, they note that there's some other stuff going on out in Colorado. So I went to look at what's happening out there, and it sounds very familiar. So first, um, this is also on the ballot in Colorado this year, and it sounds so much like what's happening here. This is CBS's, CBS Colorado's Sean Boyd explaining. Supporters of the ballot measures say it's about convenience. Opponents say it's about greed. They say grocery stores will never offer what small liquor stores do. Thousands of varieties, employees who are experts on wine, beer, and spirits, and owners committed to their communities. And so here's this guy, a Colorado liquor store owner, David Ross. He says he just wants everybody to be on an equal playing field. I just want all the big box retailers, the local uh, liquor stores, I want us all to be on an even playing field so we have an opportunity to compete fairly. Currently today I'm allowed to have one liquor license. That's it. I can have my one little store, Big Fella Wine and Liquor. I'm not allowed to have two. All right, so is this some kind of national playbook that's going on and Massachusetts is just one of many states trying to do the same thing? I Absolutely. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It, 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 you know, it, it goes back to stores like Total Wine and those um, certainly those chains. Even closer to home, though, we had a, um, a ballot question that never quite got off the ground to make an expansion like this that was being put up by the Cumberland Farms Company. Um, you can definitely see what they would have to benefit from putting more beer and wine into convenience and gas stations and stores like that. Um, but, you know, you're absolutely right. There are a lot of national companies who are going into this. Total Wine is the one that comes to mind. But um, also, you know, your, your targets, your Walmarts, you know, super centers of the world. And then you have the kind of closer to home grocery, like regional grocery chains that operate in multiple states, you know, like your Stop and Shop and Shaw's and places like that. Um, of course, you know, attached to companies like Giant and going under different brand names in different parts of the country. Um, so yeah, there's a, a lot of corporate money that's going to be pumped into this in all sorts of different states because there's, it's just a gigantic profit-making industry. Hmm. Soraya? I think at first thought, the even playing field argument can be sort of confusing in my mind, as I was approaching this question, an even playing field would mean everybody's allowed to have what they want mm -hmm. um, in terms of license availability. Um, 
But in thinking about what Mike just said about giant corporations, like having the resources to have multiple licenses and make money, it would, if we were to get rid of licenses, make it very hard for these independent stores that have some of them, a lot of them been in business for generations, make it really hard to sustain and still, you know, make money. Mm. So here's what's interesting. Well, first of all, I still don't know what I'm going to do when I go. Y'all are helping me, but I'm still confused because <laughs> I like a diver, I like the diversity. I like I don't often go to Total Wine, but I have gone there and it's been interesting. I like uh, dipping into some Trader Joe's or wherever and maybe get a couple bottles of wine or whatever. I like going to the liquor stores as I like some specialized service and specialized um, product, uh, which is likely what I'm going to find there. So I prefer just keep my diversity while y'all messing with it. And, <laughs> and, I, and I just, I know there's money on the table. There's a lot of money on the table. And I just want to bring this up. So that's my personal response. Here's something else. Um, it says that the cities and towns across Massachusetts would still have the power to limit the volume of liquor licenses in their individual jurisdictions. So now I guess this gets back to what you were saying a little bit, uh, Soraya. It sounds like the wild, wild west because this thing passes or doesn't, uh, wherever, and and now the cities and towns can also have some power in this. So is it a, is there a scenario I could imagine where there's five total wines that have nine licenses or whatever, and maybe nothing else, or maybe uh, no grocery stores have. What happens there? <laughs> this is the thing about whether or not this question passes. It's that you could potentially see expansion because you're right. Ultimately, municipalities or so cities and towns will have the final say about who gets what and where because there are local caps. And in the same way with our um, marijuana stores, you know, got to be mm. spaced out and in certain places. So it's it's not guaranteed that your favorite grocery store would be able to then sell hard liquor. Um, it depends on whatever the local rules are. Hmm. Mike, you want to add anything to that? No, I, it, to yeah, complicate it even more for you, Kelly, and just kind of go <laughs> back to that initial um, reverse compromise in a way that this is being portrayed or at least being put forward is that this is a move from those local liquor stores to say, okay, we'll give you a handful of additional licenses, but that's where it stops. That's where it ends. Mm -hmm. um, that's why you're seeing, a, this is, this is asking voters to approve a limited expansion so that a much larger expansion doesn't come into play for at least, you know, a, a decade or generation or so. And even though there's no formal opposition, I think if you talk to folks who do not like question three, they will tell you that this would kind of lock in the regulations as it is, mm -hmm. um, because we typically see people back away from issues once, you know, they've come up in a ballot question or the legislature has done something, then you see them kind of dust their hands off and back away from the issue and say, we've already addressed that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I was going to bring up the legislature because they're really quite well known for the ballot question passes <laughs> and then they don't do anything and then nothing happens. So it's like nothing ever happened. There was no ballot question, right? I mean, we've seen this a few times. Mike? <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, we're seeing a ballot question everyone forgot about end up with a whole bunch of tax rebates for everybody. So there is precedent that they, these do these laws do stick. But I think the most relevant one here is the marijuana law that passed. Uh, voters said, yes, we want to legalize yeah. marijuana sales. And the legislature rewrote the thing wholesale. Um, just, you know, come started from scratch, more or less. They, they took what the voters wanted, the intent of the voters, and then completely redid all the bureaucracy and uh, red tape and the regu regulations that went into it. So absolutely, the, the legislature can ignore, re rewrite, or enforce really anything that they want when it comes to ballot measures. So this could... We could be here again, or they could, or it could be something totally different the next time we have a conversation about it. Oh yeah, Total Wine or, or some other. I don't want to blame them completely, but you know, some big corporate entity uh, with a lot of money wants to start lobbying the legislature to eliminate any kind of uh, license limits entirely. With you know, five years from now, that could absolutely happen. 
I'm Callie Crossley, and you're listening to Under the Radar with Callie Crossley. If you're just tuning in, I'm joined by Soraya Wintersmith of the GBH Newsroom and Mike Dean of the Boston Axios Newsletter. We're dissecting ballot question number three, which focuses on alcohol sales. So here's where I think uh, somebody in the, in the, in the Co- CBS Colorado piece said, you know, this is about greed, um, because the two seems to be safety questions. One about the, the out of town uh, driver's licenses. And then we didn't we hadn't talked about you can't self check out with alcohol, which I asked my lovely producer, Kelly, why is I don't understand that. <laughs> and she explained to me that in her youth, her wayward youth, you could you could <laughs> check out something else instead of the liquor if you were underage. So, you know, I'm such a Pollyanna and I, I did not understand that. So I'm assuming that that is why that is a part of this measure. But you could take those two. And those will really be consumer safety issues and, you know, get a good response from the rest yep. of us because we have, you know, intimate familiarity with that. That makes sense to us, but it's now tied up with this other mess. So right. obviously they're trying to get our attention to say, see, we can give you some safety tips if you just vote for this other stuff. Am I right? Mike? It's much more palatable. <laughs> yes, I think it's because it comes from the liquor store lobby, uh, you know, the mom and pops, the we're all familiar with, they take a lot of pride and they feel very strongly about the safety side of what they do. And, um, this, the, you know, not selling to minors, making sure that everyone's ID gets checked. They have no faith in supermarket checkouts to be as, you know, carry that level of scrutiny when it comes to alcohol sales, they want to protect what they have, um, which is a, a business that is very well regulated, but also very well run under those regulations from their perspective. Um, and they think that they have the the trained staff, the knowledgeable staff, mm-hmm. the safety uh, element all built in there already. And they don't want to see grocery stores, you know, really start letting six packs slip under the under the scanner, so mm-hmm. to speak, like mm-hmm. you were describing before. It would also remove the excuse, right, if I am a grocery store and this fine structure changes and now I have to worry about paying more in fines if someone is caught um, with alcohol that they purchase from my store and they're underage. If we don't have those automated checkouts, what excuse do I have for my employees who... Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. allowed someone to walk out of the store. If it's face-to-face, then someone has to be responsible for having checked the ID Mm -hmm. and looked at the person and assessed that they were old enough to buy alcohol. And there's no excuse. It removes the excuse. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I tell you, I always get asked, wherever the grocery stores, they seem to look at me even more closely. I'm just saying right now, that's generally the situation. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know if it's just me, but it's a personal thing. I don't know. All right, so from the... Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> oh, no, I was going to say, there's plenty of new technology in play here, too. Cash registers that physically won't allow you to sell alcohol won't oh. let the sale go through unless you scan a valid license. That's something, you know, Roach Brothers uh, downtown Boston has that. doesn't matter. You could be, you know, a 95-year-old you know, person coming in there with a bottle of wine. They're going to demand your license because the register simply won't let the sale go through without it. Got gotcha. you. Um, As an aging woman, you can have my license all day, every day. Like, check me, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just going to say black don't crack, so <laughs> they have to check me because my youthful appearance <laughs> may yes, lead Kelly, them astray. Yes. <laughs> but I digress. <laughs> let, me, let me ask this question. What's your sense, each of you, of whether or not this is going to pass? I feel like the Boston Globe just did a piece where they informally assessed whether or not folks would like to vote yes. And it seems like... In reading that piece, consumers would find it more convenient. I think there's a line in the story that says, instead of having to walk five blocks, I would just have to walk one to go and get my favorite liquor. Mm. What's your sense, Mike? Uh, Yeah, I I would say that on first blush, it does seem like the consumer benefit is pretty clear. It it will be a limited expansion of this, and I'll be able to, you know, maybe my Trader Joe's will have wine instead of having to go to the next town over's Trader Joe's to get wine. That kind of thing is pretty clear. And the other side, it doesn't, you know, monumentally change the way beer, wine, and liquor are sold in Massachusetts because it's such a limited expansion. Um, So people might say, okay, let's do this smaller expansion now, uh, but I don't want to see, you know, things change too, too much. So it could very well stand a chance of passing. Yeah, well, it seems to me that if you don't want to see things change too, too much, just say no and then make them go back to the drawing board and do something else. That's a little bit more in point. If it something... could be more drastic, though. 
Well, that's true. Or it could not be, given that it took this long to you know, get to <laughs> <Yeah>. this point. <laughs> Um, one last question, which might not be appropriate here. This does not apply to restaurants. Um, you know, there, we have such a fraught history in this state in greater Boston, certainly with liquor licenses and um, certainly persons of color being able to get them. Is there any race issue here in this? Or is this is no. Um, let, let me know if there's if there's something I'm missing with regard to that, because it certainly is when we talk start talking about restaurant liquor licenses. I will say the folks at Tufts uh, Tisch School, when they did an analysis of this question, as they do to try and help voters understand the impact, I think they did recommend that the legislature clarify whether or not this would apply to restaurants because it's unclear in the text. Mm, Mike? Um, I haven't heard that specifically. Uh, certainly there are issues surrounding um, citing of, of liquor stores, you know, mm-hmm. and where they are and what neighborhood and, and the, how many and, you know, uh, things like that. I haven't heard that here. Um, it will be interesting to see if that consumer aspect does, it, you know, matter to some of those bigger grocery stores. You could see uh, maybe a smaller grocery chain or maybe, you know, an independent grocery chain really benefiting from this kind of thing, uh, especially if they're dealing with, um, you know, a, a more niche kind of um, selection of beer and wine. Well, I have to say, we only have four ballot questions. That each of them seem to be particularly confusing this year. Go around. Maybe it's just me. Um, this is certainly right up there with them. So I'm, I'll be very curious to see what the voters decide on November 8th. But in the meantime, I thank both of you for deconstructing the yes and the no of ballot question number three. Oh, great to be with you, Kelly. Hey, Kelly. Happy to do it. Sarah Wintersmith is a political reporter for the TV, radio, and digital GBH newsroom. And Mike Dean is a co-writer of the Boston Axios newsletter. And both of them are great political reporters. <laughs> 